For years, I resisted against using Dillwind. I tried multiple times, but every time I thought, this sucks so much. And then I went back to my old way of doing pretty quickly. Until one day, arbitrary values were released and I decided to give it one more try. And that to me was the missing link. And from that day on, which is now two years ago, I have never looked back. However, this video is not about convincing you that you should use Tailwind. I mean, you do you, I do I, and that's about it. But what I do want to show you is a specific way that I think if you're using Tailwind, you have to adopt it. Especially if you're working with more than one person, this is a vital way and the only way to build production grade Tailwind websites, if you ask me. So what is that one vital thing? Well, it has everything to do with removal. Because if you take a look at Tilwin's original box where they show you how to install it, this is what you see. And there is one line in this file that is particularly interesting. That is this extent line. And that extent line is by default in there and many people also leave it in there and start creating their Tailwind configuration from there. But what exactly does this do? And I know perhaps this sounds so simple to you and you think, oh my God, is this the video close dislike? Please don't, because I think I can teach you a very valuable lesson here. So I set up a very basic project with an empty Tailwind config file, as well as a very small app so I can show you what I mean. This is the default Tailwind configuration. And what Tailwind then does is it simply includes a lot of utilities and also a lot of, for example, colors for you that you're able to use. So if I would go into my component and I would add class name on here, then I can simply write BG red 300 and we just have a color that we can use. And also one thing that's important is that Tailwind does not bundle all of these class names by default. On built Time, they take a look at which colors or which variables you're using and whatever you're not using they simply strip out. So it's not that it suddenly creates a bloated CSS file. However, one thing that's important to me is if you're, for example, working in an agency, working with a team on a project, all of a sudden you have all of these colors and all of these spacing settings and font sizes, for example, because we also have a text large, for example, in there that we just get that also out of the box. And it has a specific font size of, in this case, 18 pixels. However, again, by default, this is what most people use and all of these font sizes are suddenly in there. And then perhaps, you're gonna say, okay, I want to change font size and I wanna make the large something that's to REM because that's what my design requests. And then all of a sudden you start changing a few of these variables. But the thing is, whatever is still in there is also all of those other variables as well or all of those other sizes. Because you're using extent, they're not removed. And that means one important thing, all of these unused variables that aren't really part of your own custom design system are still in there and other developers, and maybe even you, will start using them. And that means that there's less consistency within your design, especially, for example, all those colors. You don't need them. You don't need 10 green colors or 10 gray colors if your design system only has two. For reference, let's take a look at a very small CSS framework design system starter that me and other developers back in the day when I was working in agency still have set up. In there, you see also that we have some sort of settings variables because we also were working with utility for CSS. So we also created, for example, margin classes and we pretty much built our own Tailwind because I think utility classes are actually a really neat way of writing your CSS. And this was back in the day when we were still using SAS. And if you, for example, open the colors file, you see that we have a few colors set up. There is even already like some grays in there, some social media colors. The whole goal of this was to be a starter where you also removed a lot of stuff if you didn't need them. But the starting point at least was a lot smaller. For example, your color palette had three primary, secondary, and tertiary colors that were the main colors of your design system. And from there, you build it upon anything you need. But the whole idea was that there is not a lot included that you don't need. So that way, if you start using the project, you only have, for example, the font sizes and colors that you actually need. And if we then switch back to Tailwind's default team, which you are extending, then you're all of a sudden getting all of these very nice colors for gray, zinc, neutral, stone, and that's only the colors. We can also, for example, take a look at spacing. And then you see that you all of a sudden get all of these different spacing variables as well. And of course, there is some sort of scale in this, but perhaps your designer wants to have a completely different scale. Maybe they want to double everything with 10 pixels every time you go a step up, or they want to have a logarithmic scale. There's a lot of differences in the design. And the designer will really appreciate it if you use these different settings. But if you would resort to Tailwind, you might add a few extras in here and there, but people again would start using existing values 
values that are out there, and all of a sudden, your design is not consistent anymore. So what do I think the solution would be? Well, let's go back to the editor. And then we're actually not going to use the extend, at least not for now. And what we're going to do is we're going to add a few properties on the root of the team instead of inside that extend object. What we're going to add, for example, is colors. And I also want to add spacing in there, and probably also font size and maybe even font family. So this way, by not using extend, but by adding them as the root property of the object, we're kind of resetting them to an empty object. And then all of a sudden, we are able to define our own custom colors. So we can, for example, say primary color, and that is, and that is for example, red. But now, if we would go into our colors and we would use background red 300, let me also autocomplete background, you see that we only get background primary. So we are not able to use background red 300 anymore. And why is that? Because the background red 300 is not part of our own design system. And of course, we can still say that we want to have a few specific grays in there. Then we can add gray. And we can simply add numeric values in here. You already see like Copilot auto-completing a few. We could say, OK, we want to have these 100 and 200. Those are the ones we keep in, because those are what the designer created. And then again, if we would add text gray, you see that we get 100 and 200, and that's the only things. So this way, all of a sudden, you're building a way more consistent design system. And if one day another developer will take over this project, they simply know which calls are part of the design system and which they shouldn't use. And then you can, of course, do exactly the same for spacing, create your own custom spacing scale, and the same things for font sizes and font family. Instead of using what Tailwind by default offers, you simply create your own variants. And by only setting these few things, for example, the background is then automatically updated as well, because if we go back to the Tailwind config, the default team, and we go to background, background color, we see that what it does is it simply extends the colors. That is what it also uses for background colors. So if we override colors, then all of a sudden our background colors is also updated. And I think these few, and probably you also want to add font weight on there, so you can only use specific fonts that are available either in your font family or chosen by the designer. And then by only overriding these few variables, I think you can create a much more unique and especially much more consistent design. And then finally, depending on your design, you might also want to restrict values for, for example, blur or box shadow, because also Tailwind includes a lot of them by default again. And if you want to have a more consistent design, it's good to maybe only have two different types of box shadows. So that way, you can only use those two. And of course, if there is a single instance where you need a different type of background color, you're of course still able to use the arbitrary values, where you can, for example, say background and then we make it green. That's, of course, possible for a very specific instance where there is only one instance that uses this color. But then again, I don't think you should resort to something that's in your team, but rather create an arbitrary value. And if you're using it multiple times, you should simply put it in your team. And finally, also for the breakpoints, there could be a decision based on your design to also override those and have the breakpoints at different points instead of using Tailwind's default. But for most of the websites, I think these screens are fine and I tend to use them. But also, please don't start to reset and remove everything from Tailwind because all these other classes, for example, Flexbox classes, Grid classes, things like that, they're of course really useful and they don't necessarily change anything that's part of your design system, but are rather just the utilities that you use to build your page. But specific things like colors and spacing, they can make a website more consistent. And that is why I think you have to reset them to simply build a more consistent website. So the one final thing you might be wondering is, OK, and why would I then not add the calls object inside of the extend property? Because that is most of the time what people are doing. Well, if you would do it like this, then you are able to use background primary, because that's still a valid class name then. But you're also able to use background red 300 again, simply because you are extending that object instead of overwriting all of the colors. So even though this is the default, I think you really should make it your default to only use custom colors that you are using in your design. And finally, in case you really want to keep those blue cards in, you can still do that. Because if you, instead of an object, return a function, then all of a sudden you have access to the colors property, which you can then use to simply assign blue back to blue again. And that holds all of the different blue colors that you want. And then all of a sudden, you're able to use background blue 200 again. And once more, I think this is the only way you should use Tailwind. 
simply because of all the consistency benefits it brings. Let me know what you think about this down in the comment. And also leave a like on this video if you also think this was a very useful video. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.